Shalom and welcome to another time of Israel's Hope Bible Church Online. My name is Ron Grossman and we're continuing our studies in the book of Galatians, specifically today for June 22nd, 2022. We're going to be in Galatians chapter 3 and we're going to be looking at verses 15, 16, 17, and 18. So before we start, let's pray and ask the Holy Spirit to direct us. Father God, we do thank you for everyone looking in live now. And for those who will look in later on our YouTube channel, we ask that blessing would come from the preaching of your word, not because of us, but because of you, that your Holy Spirit guide and direct in everything said and done, giving you all the glory and honor. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. So follow with me, please, as we read these verses. Galatians 3, starting in verse 15, says this, Brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be... Though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man disannulleth or addeth thereto. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made, he saith, and to, no, and to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. And this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ, the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul, that it should make the promise of none effect. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of promise, but God gave it to Abraham uh, by promise. So if you were with us last time, we were looking at further historical examples uh, using uh, the example of Abraham. He received the, uh, the covenant promise 400 more plus years before the law came. And so the Judaizers claim was, well, if you want to be saved, you, you've got to keep the law and believe in Jesus. Even though the law pointed to Jesus, even though the promise was given to Abraham long before the law came, well, this is the conundrum that had been created. Now, Paul has been using Abraham and his example of leaving and going uh, throughout this chapter. Leaving from where he went, and where he came from, going to a new place of promise. Abraham was acting by faith. This is compared to how faith is presented to us in the Hebrew Scriptures Specifically, Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4, the justified ones, literally how it reads in our English, the justified ones shall live by faith. Well, combine this with John chapter 3, verse 16. Uh, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said that you all he needed to do was believe. And then Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, for by grace are you saved through faith. It's all by faith, whether it was Jesus' words in John 3.16 or Paul's writing in Ephesians 2.8 and 9. And then the writer of Hebrews says to us in Hebrews 11 verse 1, Faith is the evidence of things hoped for, the substance of things not yet seen. So since this is all the case, now let's go look at more of what Abraham has to tell us as well. The covenant, or the Abrahamic covenant, this verse is used, verse 15, of the legal terms of the day and the age. Now, what Paul is saying here is that you can't take a covenant or a contract that's drawn up under Roman law and decide that halfway through it, I don't like the way it is, so I'm going to change it. Now, let's use an example of how this can work. Uh, just recently, I read in one of our national papers here how um, a large shipbuilding company on Canada's east coast signed a contract with the government of Canada back in 2014. Certain stipulations that were put in there. And now the company is saying, well, we still want the contract honored, but we don't want to honor this part of it. You'll have to pay for it. And, of course, uh, they're thinking they can pressure the government to doing. When you have a free-spending government, you have a free-thinking uh, group of people who think that well we can we can just get them to do what we want for us and it, it'll work out all okay in the end. Well, what Paul is getting at here in verse 15 is the complete opposite of what I just explained there. When a covenant promise is made, it cannot be disavowed or disannulled. That's what he's saying. Look at verse 15. I speak after the manner of men. So he's talking about Roman covenants of the time and the age. Though it be but a man's covenant, Roman covenant of that time, yet if it be confirmed, no man dismals or adds thereto. Now, why is he saying this? Because the Judaizers were saying, fine, the Gentiles can believe in Jesus, but 
in order for them to be saved, they must keep the law of Moses. We kept the law, you'll keep the law. Well, that's not what this covenant promise is about. Now, if that were the case, then why was Abraham, this is the comparison that Paul is making throughout the chapter, why was Abraham considered to be righteous in front of God? There was no law that he could keep. So what did he do? He simply believed by faith. And because he believed by faith, God accounted it to him as righteousness. So he goes on in verse 16 and he says this, the covenants were, pro the promises, the covenants were made to Abraham and his descendants as well. Now there's a reason why he's saying this as well. Now to Abraham, look at verse 16 again. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. Now if you say, stay right there for a moment, let's just look at that first sentence. A lot of Jewish people say, well, the, the covenants that um, made to the seed, the promises made to the seed, these are to the Hebrew peoples. Well, no, that's not the point. You see, the point, the gospel, as was discussed earlier in this same chapter, the gospel was preached through Abraham, long before the, the law came, long before Messiah made his first advent. Because the promise and the initiation of the Abrahamic covenant is clear in Genesis 12, verses 1, 2, and 3. From this promise made to Abraham will come blessing to all the families of the earth. In other words, if you bless the families of Abraham, the family of Abraham, you will receive a blessing. That's, that's one stipulation that's, that's involved in that. But that normally comes when one realizes that the Messiah comes through the lineage of Abraham, Isaac, to Jacob, to the 12 tribes, to Boaz, to David, to the tri and the tribes of Judah, bringing us to Jesus. That's where genealogies are important in the scriptures that help you to understand the lineage and, and how we get from point A to point B in all of these things. So, it was made, were the Abrahamic uh, promises made to a seed? He says not. And to seeds, as of many, he goes on here, but as of one, as to thy seed, which is Christ. Through the one seed will come the promise to all the families of the earth. Now, the promises were made to Abraham and his descendants, as I've just said. These promises are immutable. They're unchanging. God is immutable. He doesn't change. So if God doesn't change, his promises don't change. If Jesus, he was named Jesus, but if Messiah was promised through Abraham, blessing to all the families of the earth, then why would God change it up now in the beginning of the church age as according to the Judaizers here? You've got to keep the law of Moses. No. There was no law at Abraham's time. There was no law until Moses came and was given the law to give to Israel. If faith was the foundation in the Hebrew Scriptures, remember Habakkuk 2 verse 4, the justified ones shall live by their faith. If faith was the foundation in the Hebrew Scriptures, then it does not change and there's this new economy called the church. It does not change to a singular seed. Israel is recognized as carrying the promise and would come by a single seed through Israel, who is Jesus. That's why, if you look at Matthew chapter 1, turn there for a moment, because when Matthew wrote chapter 1, um, and in particular verse 1, he made a point here of, of making it very clear what it was that he was talking about in the person of Jesus. He said, the book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. It comes down through one line. But again, it's not that the promise stops with Israel or stops with only those who keep the law. Israel would recognize that promise, realizing it would come through this singular line. But Jesus, the son, in the singular sense, as he's referred to in Matthew 1.1, 1, 1, of Abraham, the true singular heir of the covenant. There's no other person and no other way. He goes on and he says this in verses 17 and 18. We're back in Galatians 3. And this I say that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ, the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul that it should make the promise of none effect. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. Abraham received 
the promise of righteousness simply by believing and it was given to him by God with absolutely no other idea in mind that he had to keep law or anything that matter he had no law to keep but he knew to be a righteous person he made his mistakes you can read about them in the Genesis account instead of waiting for God to fulfill the promise that he would give him a son he went and had a son through Hagar his Egyptian slave maid uh, instead of waiting in the land because there was uh, a famine he went down to Egypt and that got him in trouble but God never threw him away God let him have the consequences of following following after his own desire his own lead there are always going to be consequences for that but he never removed the promise and so the Judaizers would say you you've got to keep the law you've got to do this you've got to do this. it's it's no different for them you've got to keep the keep the law and have to have the promise but that's not what God had said all along so when did when is it that all this came to be well you see it talks about how in this portion here how this was 430 years after that the law came and so there's some question about when that happened if if it's 430 years and it's just an aside for us to have an understanding of what that 430 means so bear with me a moment if you believe it that it's 430 years after Abraham that takes you to Egypt there, there's no doubt about that but if it's after the covenant is confirmed with Jacob that starts in Genesis 35 verses 9 to 12 however this neither gets Israel out and in of the land after Egypt if we go from either the first point 430 years after Abraham or 430 years after the confirming of the covenant with Jacob in Genesis 35 but there is a third point which according to some Bible scholars that I researched tell us Genesis 46 1 to 4 the final confirmation of the covenant made with Jacob regardless this covenant was a process given before Jesus and Jacob when he received the final confirmation of that promise that had been given to Abraham to Isaac and again to him twice well he believed and he believed before the law came and it would be 430 years after the final confirmation of the covenant made with Jacob in Genesis 46 1 to 4 now why do we say all that well he talks about it here is 430 years later in, in verse 17 so it is good to have a clear understanding of what that time frame is but that time frame takes you takes us to the, the is basically pretty specific time it's not exact it's not to the day the month the day and the year but it's within the territory of that time and that's how the Hebrew mindset worked as long as it was around the that approximate time it was pretty accurate and they were accepting of it in our Western rational mind if it's 430 years it has to have a beginning date and an end date well yeah it, it can and it should but I think that the important thing is to know this the promise was given to Abraham to Isaac to Jacob more than 400 years before the law was given to Moses and the early patriarchs simply believed by faith and God accounted it to them as righteousness Habakkuk 2 for the justified ones shall live by their faith and the writer of Hebrews talks about faith again I'll point it out that it is the evidence of things hoped for the substance of things not yet seen believe me Abraham Isaac and Jacob they hoped for the substance of that promise they had never saw it in its total fulfillment but one day you and I who are followers of Jesus who can look back on the whole story we have it in this book called the scriptures the Bible we can look back and now we understand it and we'll understand it even more when we make time to be with the Lord one day soon that's why we exist as a ministry and one of the reasons why we're teaching through the book of Galatians to dispel the 
false teaching out there that says uh, if you're a Gentile, yes, believe in Jesus, but keep the law, come to a messianic synagogue, all these things. These are not, these are wrong, this is wrong teaching, and we don't hold to that. No. There are some who think that that's right, and they believe in Jesus, and they want to meet Friday, Saturday. Good, if you want to do that, that's, that's your prerogative and your choice. We don't endorse that. And we have some brochures that speak to that point and speak to those things. Our brochure on uh, our own testimony and the question of Messianic Judaism. And if you'd like those, feel free to contact us. Go to our webpage at www.ihopecanada.org and we'll be happy to send those along to you. We're a faith ministry. We trust God's people to be moved of the Lord to meet our needs on a daily, weekly, and monthly basis. It's summertime and the giving is down, and we'd appreciate it if you would consider a special gift to Israel's hope at this time. It would be very much appreciated. Again, our webpage is www.ihopecanada.org. And if um, you go there, you'll hit the support us icon bottom right of the screen. It'll take you to the support page, and you can find there instructions about how to give an e transfer. Follow the instructions there that you see. When you click in there, it's not a live icon, but if you want to give uh, immediately, you can do that through our PayPal account, one of the best and most secure ways of doing online giving, either PayPal or in Canada e-transfer, Canadian account to a Canadian bank account. And if you'd like to send a check in the mail, that some still do, you can do that by simply finding our P.O. Box address on our webpage. Again, that address, web address is www.ihopecanada.org. We do thank you today for looking in, and we hope we've been an encouragement to you. And let's close our time in prayer. Father God, thank you again for Jesus, for eternal life, and everything you do for us. Now use this time to honor and glorify you. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. So until next time, we say Shalom.